Today I want to talk about select tags. So these are the drop-down lists that you can get inside of HTML forms. Um, I want to talk about select, the option tag, the opt group, and JavaScript that we can use to control these and get the data out of them once users have interacted with them. Okay, so let's jump right in and take a look. Here's my page. I've got uh, some CSS up at the top here, just some default styling for them. And if you want a finished copy of this with the CSS, the HTML, and the JavaScript, if you look down in the description, you'll see a link there to the finished version of this file. Now we've got here a select tag right here. This is what we're looking at right now. And I've got an ID and a name inside of here. So IDs are great for targeting things with JavaScript with CSS, you want to target something specifically and get to it, that's the best way to do it. The name attribute, if you just submit the form, so you've got a button inside your form, the user clicks on it and it sends it off to some server side resource that's going to handle the data from the form, the name is the part that's going to get sent off to the server. And also, if you are using a form data object to extract the data from your form, then the name attribute has to be in your form elements. If you only have the IDs, it's not going to work. The form, net, form data object is not going to pick up the values. So very important to have those. The options, these are the values that you're going to have inside your drop-down list. So this is what's visible to the user here. The dust, beer, and cheese with the capital letters at the beginning. That's what's visible to the user. And then the value, this is what would get sent off through the JavaScript off to the server. So these are the values that get submitted. These are the values that the user sees. An opt group. This is an option group. And the label is what the user is going to see. So you can tell here it's bundling around them. This is the parent of these three options. If we look back into the form, here's that opt group here. Maybe and maybe not. Those are the opt group labels. And by default, things are indented here. These are not selectable. The opt group, I cannot click on them. I cannot select them. They're just a label to bundle these options together. So you can add as many of those in there as you want. You can put one around each option if you want. But the important thing here is that the value is what they're going to select. You'll notice there's no value on the opt group. Now, if you do want to have a page that loads and have something selected by default, you can actually add the selected attribute. So with that selected, when my page reloads, you can see beer is the one that I added this value to, and beer is showing up in that list. If I open this up, you can see the little check mark beside this. So that is the selected value in my drop-down list, in my select. Okay, a couple of other attributes that are fairly common. With select, if I say multiple, so I haven't saved this yet, right now the way it stands, as I select different values, I can only pick one at a time. Even if I hold down the command or the option or shift or something else, I can only pick one thing at a time. With multiple, when I save this, come back here, now you'll see it's showing. I can still scroll through this, but by default, it's showing four items here. We can control how many are shown. We could say size equals six, for example. That's going to show six of my options. CSS can override that to change the height of what's being shown. But there's the beer. It is selected by default. But now I can hold down the command key on the Mac or the, um, I forget what the key is on Windows, but you can select multiple options here. So I can click on one, hold down shift to get a range or like this with the control to select multiple options. I think maybe it's with the control on the windows. You can tell I've been working uh, <laughs> on Mac for a little while. All right, so that's what we have here with the multiple, allows us to select multiple ones. Size lets us control what's how many of these options are shown by default. Okay, save that. So now moving into the JavaScript, when somebody is going to select one of these options, there's an event called input that we're going to use. So all I have here is a little bit of sort of boiler, boilerplate code. 
DOM content loaded. When my page is finished loading, I'm going to find the flavors element. That is my drop down list. That is the ID here, flavors. Find that element and add the input listener onto the select tag. And we're going to call the function handle select. EV is going to be the event, the input event, which takes place every time the user selects something new. Whether it's single select or multiple select, every time they're selecting something, this function is going to run. So I can use ev.target to get the select tag. Even though the user is selecting an option element, it's the select that is the target for this handler. So ev.target will give me the select, same way as if I did document get element by ID flavors, just like I did up here. Both are doing the same thing. We can console.log. If we take our select element and we get its value property, this is the value of the first thing selected. So I click on one, there's the value. I click on a different one. Every time I click on another, it switches and changes what's being selected. If I've got the multiple option, I can click on multiple things. But what's happening is I'm only getting the very first thing in that list that the user has selected. Even though they've selected multiple options, the value only gives me the first option with the selected property set to true. So that's the one that we did up here, like this, selected. I can go through and put selected on all of these for default for when the page loads, but the value of this select will only be the very first one in this list, in the order that they're written. Okay, so we have that. What if they select multiple ones? How do we get at all of the values inside of there? Well, we've got a couple of options. We can, let's create a variable here called choices. We'll say it's an array. We want to collect all the values that are selected. We can do a simple for loop. So let's say let i equals zero. And misspelled here, selected options. This is a property that exists on a select element. So the variable doesn't have to be called select. It is the select element has this property. And this is an HTML collection right here, selected options. It's not an array. It is an HTML collection. Because of that, we can't use the for each or the map method on it like we do with document query selector all, but this will give us something that we can iterate through. It is an iterable. So we do this and then we'll add them all into there. Some choices push. And then I want to get that we're going to grab each one and get its value property. So this now, because we're targeting, we're treating it like an array. It's an HTML collection, which is an iterable object. We have the square brackets to target each one of those individually, and we get its value. Then I can write out at the end all the values. There we go. So page loads. I've only got one selected. I can select another one. So the value comes back as dust, but my array that I built choices has everything that I selected. And as I remove things and add things, this changes as well. One other way that we can write this, if you don't want to write the full for loop, just going to comment that out. Now this is an old hack um, we used to use before the for each was available on document query selector all or map was available on that as well. We're creating an empty array, getting the map method for that array, the one that we just created, and we're calling the map method, but we're allowed to pass in what is the actual iterable thing that we want to call the map method on. And then what's the function that we want to call? Well, we're going to say for each one of the options. So this will be an option. And what I want to do is I want to get option dot value. 
So I'm looping through this object right here and just grabbing the value out of each one of the options. Same thing as we did right here, just a little bit more efficient code. Oh, I got a error here. Oh yeah, select selected options, same as we have right here. This is the property, selected. There we go, let's try this again. There's dust here. There we go. Multiple elements selected. We can put everything inside there. We have our array with all the values. Okay, and just one other quick thing to throw in here. I've been selecting these and you can see here the values for each one of these, they look like they're strings because they're inside of here, they're attributes, they've got quotation marks around them. But it's important to remember that every single element inside of a form, all the inputs, all the selects of text areas, everything is going to give you back a string. JavaScript doesn't look at what kind of element it is and then decide what are you getting back. Like here, selected options, that's a collection of HTML elements. It's not an array of values. We have to create the array of values. With our input here, down here, the handle data one, let's come back up here. We want to look at this right here, this input called thing. We're going to get its value and then compare it a couple of other compare it <laughs> with a couple of different types. There we are. So this is the input that we have up above here called thing. And right now it is type text. We're going to get its value coming out here. So we'll console.log the input.value. And I also want to see what type of data is coming back from that, just to prove that it is actually a string. So inside of here, each time I type, it's calling the input can see as I'm typing and it is string as you would expect but if I come up here and change this to number you may think oh okay now the value coming back is going to be a number well it's a string even though the type was number and I can do this with any of them there is the date selector the date time you know I'm picking a date I'm not getting a date object I'm getting a string I can do this with the color. I can do this with email. So there's my selection of color. And you can see it is a string. We can change this to email, any one of the values. It's going to be a string. That is what we get back. And selects are no different. When you get the value, you're getting that one single value. All right, so I hope that helps you out. Uh, like I said, the finished version of this code is in the description. The link to the code just is there. If you have any questions about uh, these form elements, please leave your questions in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.